Now I know, I already know, that doing this video, I I'm risking flaming keyboard fingers of fire a blazing away. Because God forbid you suggest anything isn't 100% absolutely perfect with AEW. God forbid that you levy any type of constructive criticism or negative feedback about any of their talent, any of their stories, any of anything that AEW does. It's almost reminiscent of the cult mentality of the ECW following of the 90s without any of the redeeming qualities whatsoever. Because at that time, that product was certainly a whole hell of a lot better than this one that we see from All Elite Wrestling. And I look at it and I say this. I understand that times have changed. Pop culture has changed. Wrestling has changed. In a lot of ways, not for the better, but it has changed. And you have to adapt and you have to adjust to the times and things that I'm used to from 20, 25, 30 years ago. It doesn't always have to be that way. And frankly, that's okay too. It's the past for a reason because it has passed us by. It will never be here again, unless one of us has a frickin' time machine. We're not gonna be able to go and do anything about it. So leave the past where the past is. I am, however, a strong proponent of learning from history, learning from the past, both the good and the bad. Those things that were mistakes, those things that you shouldn't have done, those things that didn't go well, Learn from those. Those are your real opportunities to grow and improve and get better, but you also learn from the successes, the things that you do well. And you want to try and mimic and continue that pattern of behavior that led to those successes that you experienced in the past. So figuring out what to maintain and continue and figuring out what you either need to stop or you need to start. But when it comes to main eventers, and when I think of main eventers, I'm thinking about wrestlers that you're putting at the very top of your card they're either your world champion or they're in your world title scene or they're somebody that you truly would put on the marquee of your event like you would build a pay-per-view you would build a show around them even if they're not in the title picture that's what i think of a main eventer you know the big money draws those are the main event guys you don't have a lot of those today in wrestling obviously and if you don't understand that then i don't know what to tell you but the thing I will say is I am not hearkening back to the days of where everybody needs to be some roided up six foot five, 280, 300 pound dude. Because when everybody's big and roided up, that ain't that much fun either. Variety is key. Having difference, especially today, when so much of it feels the same and so much of our wrestling and our pop culture in general is very homogenized and very similar, very vanilla as a result, I like different. I like unique. So if you're going to say that I'm a size mark or a Royd fan, no. If anything, I've talked about this many times over the years, I'm more about characters and stories and moments. You know, those meaningful things, those things that stick with you, those things that matter, those things that resonate and transcend time. And by God, those things that actually make the most money because they are the things that help create the largest amount of emotional connection with the audience. You know, those things that we mostly don't get from professional wrestling today. Instead, it's about crash test dummy bullshit, and we're just going to push the envelope because we never work, figured out how to actually work, never figured out how to, you know, actually become characters and performers and personalities. And we're just going to sit there and be karate champs and stunt doubles and gymnasts and all this other hot garbage that pops the hardest of hardcore fans, but is never going to be meant to grow and expand your audience. It's okay to have some people like that. You want to have a mixture. You want to have a variety. But I'm sorry. When I think about main event guys, and I think about guys that you actually build a company around, especially a major North American wrestling company, when I think about guys that you're looking at as foundational pieces, Jungle Boy, I love him. He ain't it! Why the hell is this company pushing this dude so damn hard? Have the standards lowered for professional wrestling so much that because the fans like his theme music and sing along or hum along with it, that's all it's going to take now? Have the standards dropped that low that just because he's Luke Perry's son, rest in peace, Luke, just because he's Luke Perry's son, 
that automatically means that you're going to rocket ship them to the fucking top? Like, look, you guys that have followed me for a while know I've been huge on the Jurassic Express. Like, it's one of my favorite things about AEW. I still think they've done it wrong. Like, you have the Caleb, what is his name, Komarodo or whatever the fuck. Like, you look at him, you say, caveman, dinosaur, boy and his dinosaur and caveman. God, could you fucking imagine the possibilities? But in that context, as a tag team, really cool, different. I like different. It also means in a tag team, what you can do is you can emphasize positives and hide freaking negatives. But when you start branching them out on their own, and especially when you start pushing them as singles guy, the strengths don't always get more emphasized. The weaknesses and flaws become oh so more evident. And I grant it, I understand that guys are not always going to get it from day one. They're not always going to be perfect, and they're certainly not always going to be at their absolute best. If anything, the day that talent starts stops getting better, growing, improving, and evolving is the day you've got a freaking problem. But there has to be some type of like threshold here, some type of bar, some type of minimum standard. And I'm sorry, Jungle Boy just ain't it. What in the ever bluest of blue fucks does he do that is so different, that is so unique, that you say, I want to drop my money to see him? What is it? And you're going to say he does moves. Let's be real here. All of these cats can do fucking moves. If you're going to say, well, this guy's a great wrestler, this guy does a lot of great shit, you say that about everybody. So no, that doesn't mean that a Jungle Boy is the type of dude that's going to actually draw your money. You might go to a show because it's AEW, it's not WWE, understandable. Y'all want something else, God forbid. But you're going there for the brand. You're going there for the style. You're not going there for something, buddy, like a fucking Jungle Boy getting a main event world title type of push. And you know it. Like you look beyond the size thing and be like, this is a smaller ass dude. The reality is a lot of these dudes in the main event scenes of these different assorted wrestling companies in this country and around the world are fucking smaller anyways. Like, yes, it is a problem. It's not the only problem. Like, to me, the size factor does matter because you get to a point where you have people that are saying, you know, I think I could fuck this dude up that's in the main event, like regular fans. And in some cases, they're probably delusional. In other cases, they're probably right. And that is a problem. Whether you want to acknowledge it or not, the reality is that is a problem. But it is not the only problem. It's not even the biggest problem. The biggest problem is the lack of characters, the lack of storytellers in storytelling, the lack of, got, of guys and gals that can actually tell a fucking story on the microphone, that can actually be captivating on the microphone, those that can actually talk you into the arena on the microphone. We just don't get that because all of these guys sat there and said, oh, I can't do any of that shit, nor am I going to bother to actually learn how to do any of that shit. So I'm just going to crash test dummy around and do a bunch of fucking moves because that's all the standard for getting a pop in professional wrestling is about today. I mean... Jungle Boy, when you put him on the mic, he's god-awful. He's terrible. He looks vanilla and bland as shit. And there is absolutely nothing different about him from any other number of X number of wrestlers in AEW. And if we're going to be real here, I'm going to be real for a second. I don't get the Darby Allen character. Like, to me, it seems kind of dumb. That's personal taste. That's okay. We can have differences, people. But when I look at Darby Allen, I say, this is a character that has been well-crafted. This is a character that's been well-developed. This is a character that's been relative, relatively well-protected. This is a character that you associated with an icon like Sting. This is a guy in Darby Allen that you do some really good, interesting stuff with that even somebody like me who thinks the character is kind of eh, sits there and says, you know what? That was good. That was decent. I can't imagine looking at the roster, and this is, I don't know if this is Omega, if this is Jericho, if this is Cody, this is the Bucks of Suck, if it's Grandmaster Tony Khan, I don't know who the fuck it is, but I can't imagine looking at your damn roster and saying in terms of guys with similar size profiles and similar things, you sit there and you look at Darby Allen and the reaction he gets and the emotional connection that he has created with the audience on a meaningful scale and say, you know what? I'd rather Jungle Boy get a shot at Kenny Omega in the World Championship. I'd rather give Jungle Boy a fucking main event push. The hell is wrong with you? Like, 
You think about the stupidity of this company. You're more than a year and a half in, and MJF has never been the world champion. Some dumb dick thought that Kenny Omega would be better as a heel world champion, traveling around and drawing no new fans of the fucking product, and in fact, drawing fans the hell away, because he sucks. Bad enough when you do that. But then, if you're going to force us to have to suck on Kenny Omega being the world champion, then you at least need to give us some interesting, compelling, and captivating opponents for him. Jungle Boy ain't it! Jungle Boy with Luchasaurus as part of Jurassic Express? Okay, cool. They have a valuable role on the card. Jungle Boy, singles wrestler in a position where you're going to have to emphasize things such as character that isn't there, emphasizing my skills that are not fucking there, going up as a bl against a bland as shit himself world champion, you're going to get an incredibly bland ass build up or mini feud. No! You need to stop just dropping random people into the fucking main event scene. I know some of you are going to say, well, you know, this is just buying time and then they're probably going to go to Hangman Page. Okay, cool, great. You didn't need to buy any, buy any fucking time. Go there. Just go there. Even though I would argue some of the stuff they've done with Hangman Page has been pretty stupid. At least I kind of get it with him. And at least there was a story there between him and Omega that they went with briefly several months back and then have kind of stayed away from. Like, that at least makes sense to me. This Jungle Boy shit makes no fucking sense. Not everybody needs to be a main eventer. Not everybody needs to wrestle for world titles. Not everybody needs to win world titles. So when I see guys like Jungle Boy Jack Perry, no offense to him, really... Maybe it comes across that way, but it, sometimes the fucking truth hurts. Like, that's not a main inventor. That's not a world champion. That's not somebody that anybody with two fucking brain cells in their head that are booking and writing for a freaking wrestling program would sit there and say, that's the guy that everybody wants to come and freaking see. That's the guy that we want to put in this position in main events and have him be on the marquee. No. Secondary act, supporting act, cool. Plays a role, plays it well. But they've had a hard-on for Jungle Boy for a long time, and I just don't fucking get it. Like, they couldn't even win the tag titles before you sat there and really just started getting this vibe of, we're going to push him here, and we're going to push him here. It's going to be Jungle Boy, Jungle Boy, Jungle Boy. What the fuck is going on here? They didn't even win the tag, tam, damn tag titles. The fuck is wrong with this company sometimes? Look, a dude can be a decent hand, but not be the hand. You get what I mean? And that's part of the problem with wrestling today. There are no standards anymore. It ruins it. It really does. Not everybody can be a main eventer. Not everybody should be a main eventer. Not everybody needs to be a main eventer. This kind of like equal opportunity bullshit in terms of it doesn't matter, we're just going to put the next guy in that fucking spot. It diminishes the whole value of the main event. And if your main event scene, your world title especially, are fucking devalued and diminished, then what the hell does that mean for the rest of your show? Am I the only one seeing this? Or am I taking fucking crazy pills here? Jungle Boy in no way, shape, or form is a main eventer today. He's not a main event type guy a year from now. He's not a main event guy five years from now, nor should he ever be. Especially for a company that has prime time cable television every week. This brings some fucking standards into professional wrestling. AEW, try having some damn standards and some freaking decent sense here. Jungle Boy, a main eventer, my ass, stop this insanity.